Blake from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Monday, May 13th. Okay, so Mondays are ruled over by the moon and to have the moon in her rulership on a Monday also just kind of suggests that we're in for some emotional tweaking, if I do say so myself. However, the moon in Cancer energy is going to go void, of course, at 5.14 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Leo energy at 6.37 a.m. So not a whole lot of time that we are going to spend Monday, moon day, with the moon in her rulership in this Cancer energy. We are welcoming this transition because, of course, with the moon in Cancer, we tend to be a little bit more withdrawn, a little bit more introverted, a little bit more isolated, a little bit more emotional, if I do say so myself. And the pick-me-up that is needed coming out of that emotional refinement zone is this Leo energy. The Leo energy is the heart and soul of the Zodiac. It returns us to the heart and soul of the matter. It puts us in a situation to bring forth our authenticity authenticity in order to do what it is that our heart needs us to do. That Leo energy is bold, it's brave, it's courageous, it is ready to put ourselves out there, it's ready to be in the spotlight, it is ready for us to make a major move. And because we have a pretty important aspect taking place here today between the Sun and Uranus, change is definitely on the horizon. Now, with all of that being said, there are 11 different aspects taking place here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. Before we get into any moon energies, we have a pretty important aspect popping off between Mercury and Jupiter. So, of course, Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in this Aries energy, free and clear of the post-retrograde shadow period as of today. Mercury is going to be making a positive interaction with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. He's in this Taurus energy, giving us a very low, slow, steady approach to making some major changes in our physical realm, especially where new options and opportunities are kind of pushing us outside of our comfort zone in order to expand on some of the ideas, some of the changes of heart in which we've had in order for us to start living a realm, a reality that not only looks good, but feels good, very much in alignment with our higher selves. Now, Mercury and Jupiter coming together. First of all, there's a more positive, more confident outlook on life, a more positive positive, more confident inner narrative, if you will. And because Jupiter is here to magnify and expand on thoughts, ideas, perceptions, visions, and dreams, we are really going to feel this extended pressure on our headspace. Now, I am going to recommend that you take a listen to the Ascension forecast for this week, if you haven't already, where we go over the Ascension symptoms and how the energy actually manifests in the physical form. Mercury interacting with Jupiter is giving us a bigger, broader perspective, bigger, broader ideas, really pushing us outside of our comfort zones, especially where the options and opportunities to make major changes and actually grow and expand in our lives is concerned. And so there is going to be some revelation, some aha moments, if you will, but it is going to create a little bit of a chaotic type of mind frame because, of course, we're looking to expand on things, but we have to find that sweet spot. So we're going to kind of go balls to the walls with some big ideas, some big dreams, some big visions. Then we're going to have to reel it back, come back down to earth a little bit, add logic and practicality to it. And then again, expand on that realism that we are now trying to kind of integrate until we find the sweet spot on what it is that we actually feel comfortable, not only kind of aligning with, but comfortable in actually taking action upon so the moon in Cancer energy, then going to sextile Jupiter. So now we're not only thinking big and seeing the opportunity to grow and expand on these ideas, but we're actually feeling like we're ready to do it, which is a very dramatic shift, if I do say so myself, with the moon in Cancer, because typically speaking, we're overly attached to the past. We have no want, need, or desire to even think about the future because it kind of makes us feel not as safe and secure as we would pretend to feel in this present moment, even when we're uncomfortable with some of the situations and circumstances that our old self had definitely built. 
But the moon sextiling with Jupiter is a harmonization of positive energies, optimism, confidence. We're feeling like we're ready to kind of edge our way outside of the comfort zone and try something new, which is a beautiful thing because it means that our heart and our head are actually working together and thinking about, again, the futuristic realm of possibilities that Jupiter is now offering us. The moon is then going to get into the boxing ring and square it out with Mercury, though. So it's almost like Mercury, you know, we were feeling good. We were thinking big. We were kind of in alignment with the goal, with the vision, the dreams. And then the moon interacting with Jupiter. We were trying to get an alignment of confidence, of optimism, of thinking about these options. And then all of a sudden, what happens just when our heart and our head is on the same page? we have to fall back into the egoic darkness. Why? Because the fears, the doubts, the insecurities come out to play when we're ready to make a change. This is the, let's call it dark force energies attempt at preventing us from growing, from evolving. So of course, our heart and our head, they're gonna get in the boxing ring, they're gonna fight it out. This is the point in time where the moon and cancer, again, kind of pivots away from thinking about the future and starts really, really doubling down on trying to keep things the same. Well, that isn't going to jive with Mercury being an Aries energy. We are just balls to the walls looking forward. We have no rear view mirror. We have no want, need, or desire to look back. Thus, the conflict, thus, the tension. This is going to illuminate where it is that we are having some insecurities, some fears, some doubts about the big ideas, the big visions that we just had earlier on. And now we have to illuminate where it is again that we are the problem. We are essentially blocking ourselves from moving on. The moon then makes a positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Taurus energy. And if you listen to, you know, the previous daily energy forecast, you would know that the moon and Venus, they got together. They had a little bit of a pep talk here yesterday. And Venus just kind of blatantly came out to say, listen, logically, practically, we're not happy. Therefore, we should make some changes. Therefore, whether it's in the way that we're treating ourselves or acting in relationship dynamics or really putting ourselves on a path in an option and an opportunity to expand on our finances, on our resources. These are the areas of concern that Venus is, is most focused on. Love, money, relationships, and futuristic long-term goals. And so she kind of had this pep talk with Luna, the moon goddess, and yesterday, we were kind of on the right track, realizing that we have to break away from the old attachments. We have to kind of, you know, separate our nostalgia and sentimentality in order to realize that that ship has sailed. We've outgrown these particular relationship dynamics or situations with money or situations with how it is that we treat ourselves. And therefore, we have to try something different. We have to grow up. We have to move on. And so they're coming back together just as a little bit of a reminder, especially, you know, having this boost of confidence and optimism and semi excitement for the future. And then, of course, you know, the moon and Mercury got in the boxing ring. They were fighting it out. Well, this is a little bit of a pep talk. This is Venus coming and saying, OK, girl, like we need to get our shit together. Right. You can't pray for change and then not get up and answer the door when opportunity knocks. So we're jiving, we're realizing that we're having a change of heart, we're having a change of worth, we're having a change of values, we're having a change in our, let's call it perception of the options and opportunities available to us. And instead of sitting in a fear-based narrative where growth and evolving doesn't happen, we're starting to kind of build ourselves up to this peak precipice where of course change has to happen if we want any kind of different result in our physical realm. 5.13 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the sun is going to come up to, bump into, team up with Uranus. So this happens every year. This is our annual conjunction between these two. And let me just say that the sun shining a bright light on this Uranian energy is going to be a major shift, a major change, a major disruption. This is the pivot point where we actually start pivoting and walking in a brand new path in a new direction. So this has a couple of different trigger points depending on where it is that you're at with you know managing these energies. One side of it could bring like a huge overwhelming sense of freedom. Like we're breaking away from the old, we're building ourselves up, we feel confident that we have what it takes to make this major move. 
we are feeling a little bit more excited and, and inspired for the potential of, you know, the path, the direction that we now want to walk. It opens ourselves up to thinking in new ways, to feeling in new ways, to acting in new ways, especially where relationships and money matters are concerned. And so that can be a very positive type of trigger and activation. The not so positive, and I'm not going to say it's negative because we can make this work for us, is that how this energy manifests is through feeling trapped, feeling like you have to fight back, feeling like you have to rebel, feeling like you have to kind of defy the odds stacked against you. And what I mean by that is maybe it's not the most, I'm going to say, positive vibration compared to excitement and inspiration. However, it is a, a true force, a true power source that is definitely lighting a fire under our ass, so to speak, in order to make the changes that we have been currently resisting. So whichever way you look at it, we are tapping into an energy to push us out of where it is that we've been and into foreign territory, whether we want it to or not. We're either going with the flow and happy to go with that flow, or we are fighting back against that flow and therefore creating a change in the defiance or rebellion of trying to not, you know, kind of continue the same old, same old. Either way, there is this weirdness. There's this weird vibe. It's going to affect our central nervous systems. It's either going to create anxiety, anticipation, excitement, or inspiration. Either way, there's a new mood. There's a new attitude fueling the change that we now need to make. And so, you know, in the grand scheme of things here, uh, Uranus does kind of give us an opportunity to kind of emotionally withdraw, if you will, especially, you know, with the moon in cancer energy at this time, there's a lot of nostalgia, a lot of romanticizing the past, a lot of sentimentality in reviewing, you know, where it is that we're coming from. We get to kind of cut the cord with that emotion, with that intensity, and we're able to act as the observer, seeing the limits in our lives, the restrictions in our lives, the blockages, the obstacles in our lives, which side note, spoiler alert, it's you, you're preventing the changes that we should be making at this point in time. And in turn, in this realization, it's helping us build up this warrior type of mood, attitude and spirit that we need to kind of, you know, move ahead to move on. Um, in the great big grand scheme of things, Uranus in this Taurus energy, which he's been in for many, many years now and will continue to be in, this is about us kind of changing and transforming the way that we look at ourselves, the way that we treat ourselves, the way that we kind of operate in relationship dynamics, the way that we see money, materialistic possessions, resources, if you will, our values are changing. They're growing, they're evolving. And the more we align with the higher self, the more our values are going to change because we have to do something with meaning and with purpose. So just one minute later, 514 AM, the moon is going to trine Neptune. This is the last aspect that the moon and cancer is going to make before going void. Of course, it's a very interesting one. A trine is a beautiful harmonization of energies. This is water on water action. Cancer energy is water. Pisces energy is water and the moon and Neptune is about us getting in touch with our intuition, in touch with our higher selves, really understanding our calling, what it is that we're being called to pursue. This is a reminder of the goal of the vision of the dream that we are essentially building ourselves up in order to make. So again, this is when the moon goes void. Of course, we lock into the Leo energy at 637 a.m. Again, Eastern Standard Time. 10.35 a.m., the moon in Leo is going to make its very first aspect, which is a tough one because it's a direct opposition with Pluto, the great transformer who is retrograde in Aquarius energy. Leo energy, Aquarius energy, they sit across from each other in the zodiac wheel. So this is likely going to trigger some not so nice thoughts, some not so nice feelings. Why? Well, because when we first enter into Leo energy, we are the scared, cowardly little kitten. We have to grow into the very proud, very bold, brave, courageous lion. We will get there at the end of this particular transit, but we're not there yet. So we're coming out of this overwhelming, over emotional, over intuitive, overintuitive, over sentimental energy with the moon being in cancer. And now we're shifting into Leo energy and right out of the gate, we're pressurized. Now, again, reminder, 
Pluto being retrograde in the Aquarius energy is supposed to be highlighting for us the power struggle that's still going on within us, especially with the old version of self, that old egoic programming versus the new version of self being kind of, you know, inspired to make changes and to do things with more mission, more purpose, more value. Um, this isn't this isn't going to feel good, but it is going to highlight for us the inner conflict, the inner power struggle that is preventing us from feeling optimistic and confident and proud of ourselves and tapping into that courage and bravery needed in order for us to do the right thing, which just happens to be the hard thing to do, which is to break away from the old and actually initiate something new. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Saturn the Lord of Karma in Pisces energy. So again, this isn't, I'm going to say the most favorable energy, but it's not the worst either. It's just going to put us in a situation to understand that we're in an adjustment period where we have to grow up, where we have to boss up, where we have to jump into new roles and responsibilities, where we have to build something new, where we have to take a good look at our outdated belief system and understand where it is that the old ego programming is still keeping us very trapped under the confines and restrictions of that old belief system and where it is that we have to boss up and really break free of those particular limitations. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, she goes ahead and sextiles with Saturn shortly thereafter. And so this is a little bit more of a serious mood, serious attitude, but it's not a Debbie Downer type of attitude. It's just a logical, practical processing of our emotions and where our heart space has made some major changes, where we're not feeling as connected, as attached to some people as we did previous to, let's call it the eclipse, because that's really what kind of you know shook things up for us. And therefore, there is a little bit more, I'm going to say, of a down to earth approach on what has to end in order for new things to begin. And a lot of this is in the physical realm. We've had a change of heart about some people, but we haven't tweaked the relationship dynamic as of yet. We've had a change of heart with how it is that we see ourselves, the worth, the value, the deserving within ourselves, but yet we haven't made any changes in our physical realms to support ourselves in any kind of different way. We've had a major, major change of heart with what it is that we're doing, with what it is that we're building towards. We're having a major change of heart with, you know, how we're feeling safe and secure and stable in our finances, in our resources. But yet we haven't done anything to change it in the physical realm. And so this particular interaction is going to kind of bring us down a couple of pegs, a little bit of a reality check, but in a nice way on where it is that guess what? We're coming to a particular point now where we actually have to put into action a lot of the energy shifts that have already taken place within us. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction first with Uranus, second with the sun, because of course Uranus and the sun are very close together here today. They just had their annual conjunction earlier in the day. And so the moon interacting with Uranus is putting us in a different heart space to understand where it is that change is happening, where it is that we need to boss up, be brave, be bold, be courageous enough to actually pivot in our physical realms, to actually start making moves and taking action to replicate and mirror back to us what it is that we've already arrived at in our inner realm. The moon interacting with the sun, of course, is bringing forth a new emotional awareness, a new aha moment. Now, the moon in this Leo energy has us aligned with our real, raw, authentic self, our true heart and soul space. The sun shining a bright light in this Taurus energy is what we have to build, create, bring to life, restructure, redesign in our physical realm in order for us to actually align with the vision, the goal, the dream that our heart now wants us to pursue. So again, anytime that the moon and the sun come together, there's an aha moment. There's a jolt in our mood and our attitude. There is a realization, if you will, on what needs to be done. And because the sun is shining bright light in Taurus energy, this has to do with what we have to change, what we have to rearrange in the physical form in order for us to start building towards this goal, this vision, this dream that our heart and soul needs us to pursue.